is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Hello and welcome. Today, China Media Group is launching an international multi-platform campaign to the future together to uncover the inspirational trailblazers who build bridges between two of the world's richest cultures, China and the UK. 50 years ago today, with a simple gesture of exchanging ambassadors, the partners opened a chapter in their relationship which has underpinned their economies, enriched their people and served as an example to others. Over the past half a century, bilateral ties have gone through their ups and downs. But despite the changing political environment, individuals and communities have joined hands to share the opportunities which come from collaboration and cooperation. As we open the year-long event with today's ceremony, we're joined by some distinguished guests who are shaping the bilateral relationship at the very highest level. Please welcome Chen Haishong, President of China Media Group. Zheng Zeguang, China's ambassador to the UK. Stephen Perry, chairman of the 48 Group Club. Sir Vince Cable, former UK business secretary. Fang Wenzhen, chairman of the China Chamber of Commerce in the UK. And Michael Wood, president of the Society for Anglo-Chinese Understanding. All are here for the launch of our campaign to celebrate the bridge builders. Now let's welcome Chinese ambassador to the UK, Zheng Zeguang, who has our keynote speech. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's my pleasure to join you at the launch ceremony of the CMG project to the future together. In the 1950s, at the height of the Cold War, British entrepreneurs represented by Mr. Jack Perry broke through Western blockade against New China and started the trade and economic partnership between China and the UK. Since then, generations of icebreakers have persisted in this endeavor to promote the growth of China-UK relations. Earlier this year, President Xi Jinping sent a message of congratulations to the Icebreakers 2022 Chinese New Year celebration. President Xi commended the historic contribution of the first generation of icebreakers and showed the way forward for today's visionary people from both countries in expanding the mutually beneficial cooperation and deepening friendship between China and the UK. That was an encouraging message. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ambassadorial diplomatic relations between China and the UK. For half a century, this relationship has overcome various disruptions and obstacles and made historic progress. History tells us that cooperation serves the fundamental interests of both China and the UK. Given the different national conditions, our bilateral relationship should follow the principles of mutual respect and win-win cooperation. Today, as we stand at this new historical juncture, it is all the more important for us to emulate the ice-breaking spirit. It is my hope that visionary people from both our countries will answer the call of President Xi Jinping, take over the baton from the old generation of icebreakers. We should work together to enhance mutual understanding, reduce misperception, and increase mutual trust. We should handle our differences properly and respect each other's core interests. We should strengthen dialogue at all levels, encourage people-to-people -people exchanges, and explore ways to broaden cooperation wherever possible. 
we should draw inspiration from about the past 50 years and work tirelessly for the sound and steady development of China-UK relations in the years to come. I hope that you will all become icebreakers and bridge builders. Let's join hands to create a better future for China-UK relations together. By doing so, we will not only serve the fundamental interests of our two countries, but also help promote peace, stability, and prosperity of the world. In conclusion, I'd like to wish this project to the future together great success. Thank you. Thanks to Ambassador Zheng for setting out such a clear agenda. Now to kick off CMG's mission to uncover a new generation of icebreakers and bridge builders. Here's Shen Haishong, President and Editor-in-Chief of China Media Group. Zhenjin的政治观大使,亲爱的朋友们,大家好。五十年前的今天,中英两国建立了大使级外交关系。四十年前,中国第一部原版引进的英国情景绘画节目,BBC的 英语教学节目跟我学带动了中国广大青年学生的英语热我本人就是其中的一员去年中国中央广播电视总台纪录片国家公园野生动物王国在英国乃至全球多国广受好评不久前北爱尔兰中小学生对北京冬奥会的美好
Over the next nine months, we will bring you a special series on how the bridge builders forge bonds of friendship between the two nations. The British public not only need to know, but really want to know more about China. 70 years ago, a small group of British businessmen traveled to China to unlock opportunities between the two countries. They became known as the icebreakers. East meets West. We're now at a time when we need the icebreaker spirit. My first impression when I came to China is I noticed the similarities more than the differences. It's about understanding each other's culture. We look at the things that bring our nations together. My dad is Chinese, my mom is English. I grew up in London, but I went to China to work at age 25. Whenever I've gone to China, it's just been amazingly welcoming. The music is beautiful language and bringing all the people together. I'm exploring, I'm experimenting, I'm trying something new, all in the hopes to build a bridge. And I think we definitely need more people doing that. So it was only when I got to know my Chinese father in my 40s that I really got to know the other half of myself. I hope we make it another 50 years, another 500 years. Meet the bridge builders, the individuals who dared to think beyond the horizon and open up our world on TV and online on CGTN. I hope that you will all become icebreakers and bridge builders. Ambassador Zheng has already introduced the most inspiring pioneers of Sino-British relations. In the early 1950s, when China was suffering from a trade embargo imposed by the West, Jack Perry challenged isolationism and blazed his own trail. His bravery resulted in the signing of trade agreements worth £30 million, which would translate to more than $1 billion today. But more importantly, in the start of a new era, Jack Perry went on to found the 48 Club Group. Today, the organisation, which has ceaselessly worked to improve Sino-British ties, is headed by his son, Stephen. We are delighted to have this connection between our project today and the original Icebreaker family. My first trip was uh, about 50 years ago right now. Uh, we were asked um, quietly by China to assist with making their first purchases of bulk commodities from China. And my father, as I was leaving university, asked me to be part of the team that did that. And uh, we concluded the first deals uh, shortly after President Nixon um, was in China. So it, it was a, a relationship which was always uh, accompanied by all the formality of government to government relations and all that was going on in, in the world. When I went to America in 1972 uh, with my father and we met Kissinger's people and uh, many other leading Americans, it was a time when America was trying to become able to understand the country that they then had cut themselves off from for something like 50 years. It was um, a wonderful experience of being able to talk about China and explain it. At the same time, Edward Heath um, was taking the steps in London uh, to exchange ambassadors with China. And that is, of course, what this program uh, captures, that moment of exchange of ambassadors between Britain and China. And as we know from history, Edward Heath was probably one of the more progressive uh, prime ministers in terms of understanding the world situation and wanting to open up full relations with China. Uh, we became uh, somewhat closer to him as time went on, uh, and particularly after he left office as prime minister. Um, and for those 50 years from then to now, the transformation in the world and the transformation in China is just beyond belief. But most of our work was spent buying and selling to China or buying from China and selling to the West. We had a pretty big business and it was, uh, it, it was difficult, it was complicated, but it was also very challenging and very interesting. During that time, I developed an interest in trying to understand the long-term trends, which um, really punctuated what China was trying to do with its export imports and later its investments. And that is why I'm a little bit unusual in being a businessman with an academic or think tank interest in China. And uh, often I'm interviewed to talk about the latest developments in China or between China and the world. That's been very uh, fascinating 
and very um, stimulating. Former UK Deputy Prime Minister Lord Michael Heseltine, a giant of the UK political scene, was in government during a pivotal period for China-UK relations as both countries looked to narrow the divide between East and West. During the Cold War, he also showed himself willing to break the ice by travelling to China. I first went to China in 1973 and I've been going back on a number of visits. So I've seen the quite remarkable transformation that has taken place. When I first went there, everyone had a bicycle and they all wear Mao suits. The choice was blue or gray, but it was all a Mao suit. Uh, I, I've been back now various times. I've met many of the leaders of China over that period. And uh, I have always been greeted with great courtesy. Uh, it has been an extraordinary experience to see what undoubtedly has to be one of the most remarkable transformations from a, a feudal economy to a space age economy at a bewildering pace. Economic cooperation ultimately melted the barriers formed by the Cold War. And in one form or another, trade has always been the linchpin of China-UK relations. Over the past five decades, the volume of bilateral trade has surged from $300 million to more than $100 billion. Sir Vince Cable was Britain's business secretary between 2010 and 2015 and witnessed the burgeoning economic ties. When I was in government, uh, the coalition government uh, was building, we believed that it was very much in Britain's interest to engage positively with China uh, through trade and investment. Uh, as part of a sort of wider approach to uh, economic cooperation. I think when we now look back on where we currently are, uh, China is Britain's third largest trade partner. Um, China has a substantial surplus on visible trade, but Britain has become successful in exporting services. For example, the very large number of um, overseas students um, 125,000, I think, major contribution to British universities. Um, the City of London has become a successful exporter of financial services. And if we look at um, investment, two-way investment flows, uh, Chinese companies have become increasingly important in the UK. The investments in, the, in British Steel has helped save a... A major manufacturing company from collapse and now major investment is going into that company. Um, the company Envision is in the process of establishing a major battery plant in Sunderland as part of the expansion of the electric vehicle industry. Uh, and substantial uh, companies with a brand reputation like Locus uh, Lotus are, are, are now Chinese owned and are benefiting from investment in them. Uh, and there are very strong reciprocal flows. Uh, British companies have got heavy investment in uh, China. Um, I, I was, um, before I became a politician, I, I worked for Shell. I was involved in the uh, preparation for the substantial Shell petrochemical investment in. Guangdong, which has turned out to be a very successful project. Uh, AstraZeneca and the other pharmaceutical companies uh, have a very successful, profitable business in China. Um, and, 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 in, and indeed many others, uh, you know, Jaguar Land Rover in the car industry and so on. And so, you know, this is a relationship which uh, has been profitable to both sides uh, and which I hope will continue in, a, in an amicable way. Chinese companies are expanding their contribution to the UK economy despite political tensions and pandemic disruption, turning in more than $100 billion worth of revenue. Fang Wenzhen is chairman of the China Chamber of Commerce in the UK and also the general manager of Bank of China London branch. He's putting his weight behind the Bridge Builders project. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to join this special program to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ambassadorial level diplomatic relationship between China and the UK. Firstly, on behalf of the China Chamber of Commerce in the UK and the Bank of China London branch, I would like to offer my hearty congratulations to both our countries 
for reaching this remarkable milestone. The ties between China and the UK are long, deep and profound. Britain was the first Western country that recognized the new China. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the first generation of the icebreakers, the UK also signed the first trade deal with China in the early 1950s. Founded in 1929, Bank of China London branch has had the privilege of witnessing these historical moments, and we took pride in having played our part in this process. For instance, we facilitated the famous icebreaker trip and issued the letter of credit for the first ever trade deal between China and the entire Western world. According to a recent survey, the Chinese-owned companies have reached an astounding number of 30,000, representing a broad and diverse spectrum of industries ranging from financial services, telecoms, manufacturing to renewable energy, biotechnology and transportation, etc. We have made tangible contributions in boosting the British economy with widely spread geographical presence across the UK, creating over 61,000 local jobs directly. We have also taken an active role in fulfilling corporate social responsibilities and supporting the UK in many charity work, including combating the pandemic. Those encouraging achievements and uplifting stories clearly illustrate the fact that the China-UK cooperation is mutually beneficial and highly complementary. Looking forward, there are great potential and massive opportunities between our two countries in the areas such as low carbon transition, life sciences, and new materials. And we, the Chinese enterprises here, will play a more important role in helping the UK achieve its leveling up strategy and race to zero ambition, especially in the post-Brexit era. So as we face today's new challenges, it is our sincere hope that we can all uphold and indeed reignite that trailblazing spirit of the icebreakers passed down from the earlier generations and strive to improve dialogue, deepen collaboration, and help lift the China-UK relations to a new high. Thank you. And when it comes to ties between China and the UK, relationships between the capitals, London and Beijing, are the first that come to mind. But in fact, both countries are very proud of their regional diversity. And links forged through communities at the local level can be even deeper and more resilient. Here are some messages of support as the project gets underway. We respect the icebreakers who made the connection between the two countries to keep the relationship stable and profitable, which is good for both of us. We not only recognize the achievements so far, but also look forward to open the door to potential collaborations. The Chinese consulate will continue to raise China and our relations to new heights for the benefit of each and for the healthy, sustainable development of China-UK relations overall to the future together. As China and Northern Ireland enters the second five-year plan and with our council having signed a sister cities agreement with the authorities in Huangxi in 2018, I am confident that this will provide further opportunities to grow and strengthen this partnership for the benefit of both regions. Like the Chinese consulate, we at Midden East Dundrum have always attached great importance to the development of a friendly and mutually beneficial cooperation with China. And we look forward to deepening the relationships as we emerge from the pandemic together. Our next guest, Michael Wood, is a UK historian and broadcaster who made hit BBC series The Story of China. His most recent documentary on Du Fu, China's greatest poet, was very well received in both China and in the UK. He's also president of the Society for Anglo-Chinese Understanding, an organization dedicated to breaking down barriers between the two nations. Hello, I'm Michael Wood. I'm the president of SAKU, the Society for Anglo-Chinese Understanding. The society was founded in 1965 by the great historian of Chinese science, Joseph Needham. And at his opening speech, he described China not just as a different country, but a different civilization, uh, the understanding of which was now an absolute essential for people in the West, for international comprehension, for uh, international cooperation, and for world peace. So that was the setting for the, the founding of our society. 
And our goal is still to promote friendship and understanding and respect between our societies and advance the course of education about China in the, with the British public. Um, you know, our feeling is that the British public at uh, this time not only need to know, but really want to know more about China and that uh, mutual understanding and empathy are, are major factors in overcoming conflict and racism and hostility, which can emerge anywhere in times of crisis. Um, we're also firm believers in uh, that the unrivaled riches of Chinese civilization as one of humanity's great adventures, if I can put it that way, the whole story of Chinese civilization should be open to as many people as possible in the West. And, uh, uh, and they sh we should encourage people to understand something of the pattern of the Chinese past, which informs the present so much. Yeah, you're not only in studying Chinese civilization, enjoying the, the great creations of Chinese civilization, but you're understanding China better today. So um, China is increasingly a major, major player in today's world. And we do all need to understand China better. So uh, I'll take this opportunity uh, on behalf of Saku to add Saku's voice to um, to mark this 50th anniversary of the renewal of Anglo-Chinese diplomatic relations. Cultural understanding, appreciation and reflection can also be an effective way of breaking ice. Sean Gibson, a young British singer, began by studying in China and developed a true passion for the country and its culture. Now he uses his music, combining Western pop with Chinese sounds, to cross boundaries and win fans around the world. He's now going to perform one of his original songs just for us. I'm going to sing a song called Pass It On, which is a song I wrote about passing on traditional Chinese cultures or traditional cultures generally down from through generations and sharing it with each other. So, yeah, this song is called Pass It On. Hope you enjoy it. the beginning of our groundbreaking project. Let's hope the ice-breaking spirit will be passed on from generation to generation, just like those lyrics from Sean. We'll be bringing you more stories of inspirational figures as we head to the future together.